Coming up on the Q30 newscast, an athletic trainer's daughter here at Quinnipiac was treated like a princess for a day. And the results are in for ha the Hamden mayoral election. We spoke to the winner about his future plans. Plus, we have your update on the lice outbreak in some of the main campus residence halls. All this and more on this week's Q30 newscast. This is the Q30 News Nightcast. Good evening and welcome to the Q30 Newscast. I'm Daniel Keith. And I'm Kelly Novak. There have been a few confirmed cases of lice in both the Ermengarde and Larson residence halls. While residential life urges students not to panic, they also want to make sure students know what to do. If you think you have lice, the first thing you should do is call Student Health Services and make an appointment. Wash and dry your bed sheets and other clothes on, on high heat. Dry, them, dry cleaning them works best. Vacuum futons, rugs, chairs, and any other furniture that may have had contact with your head. And anything that cannot be vacuumed, seal in a plastic bag for two weeks. Some things to keep in mind are that head lice does not jump or fly, so it cannot be spread that way. Lice is not a sign of being dirty. Anyone can get it. It can be eliminated with proper treatment and medicine. Lice cannot live off of the body for more than 48 hours, so anything you may have had contact with two days prior will likely not be contaminated. And Quinnipiac's chapter of Beta Theta Pi was ordered to cease and desist by the university. Vice President for Public Affairs Lynn Bushnell released a statement saying, the university has issued the fraternity a cease and desist order prohibiting it from operating at the university until the student conduct process is completed. With the safety and security of our students being paramount, the university will simply not tolerate hazing of any kind by any group or individual and will act swiftly to remove the from the community those held responsible. However, according to the Quinnipiac Chronicle, the president of the colony here at QU and the director of commun communications at the fraternity's headquarters say the claims are untrue. This is the second Greek life organization this year that has been ordered to cease and desist. The Criminal Justice Club hosted the Jane Doe No More initiative in, in Mount Carmel Auditorium yesterday. Jane Doe No More is a sexual assault victims advocacy group based in New Haven. Donna Palumba, a representative from the group and sexual assault victim, spoke to students about witnessing an attack, how to go about reporting an incident, and the overall sensitive subject about se sexual assault on, on college campuses. For more information on sexual assault and Donna's mission, visit the group's website at janedoenomore.org. Domestic Violence Awareness Month just ended. A student organization here at Quinnipiac uses art to raise awareness this month. Dora Labatt tells us why. Quinnipiac's Black Student Union hosted a domestic violence awareness event with art and Chipotle in the Student Center, Piazza. Guest speaker Frida Grant works for the Center for Family Justice in Bridgeport, Connecticut. She shared with students her personal experience as a prevention educator and the statistics of how often a male or female is a victim of domestic violence. Statistically, women between the ages of 18 and 24 are the most common victims. Also, most women do not report these incidents. I asked Grant her reaction to college students that do not report acts of domestic violence. I want to say that I'm shocked, but I'm not shocked. And I'm more disappointed because a lot of the reasons for not reporting is that they don't feel like they have like a safe atmosphere to report too. So, you know, it's the responsibility of like the colleges and universities. Quinnipiac University requires incoming freshmen to take Haven, an online test on sex crimes. I asked sophomore Tiano Diallo if he thinks that this is effective. To be honest, it does not help at all. Uh, people look at it as an exam. They just want to get it over with. Haven may just be a test to some students, but events like this raises awareness about a topic people don't really talk about. The treasurer of VSU shares how she feels about the statistics. That was like kind of scary to know that like one in four women like experience this because like more than four women were here at the event, so it makes you think. Yes, it makes you think about what Quinnipiac is doing to help victims of domestic violence besides a one-time test. I'm Dora Labatt with Q30 News. With misconceptions about Islam being common, the Muslim Student Association Group decided to hold an event to educate people on the basic principles of Islam. Q30's Nicole Kessler has all the details. 
the Muslim Student Association held Islam 101, an awareness event catered to students and faculty on educating, bringing awareness, and clearing any misconceptions up about Muslims and Islam. Oftentimes, many Americans associate Muslims with terrorism and extremism, but often fail to realize what Islam's core principles and values are built upon, which is peace and mercy. Omar Bajwa, the coordinator of Muslim Life at Yale University Chaplain's Office, explained the importance of having knowledge of religions other than your own. I think it's really, really valuable in the time that we live in to learn to know, to, learn to know your neighbor, to learn more about your neighbor, to appreciate your own tradition and your own culture and values, and to also learn about and appreciate and understand your neighbor's values and traditions and culture. The five pillars of Islam which Muslims often live off of are the basic principles to Islam. Most Americans, though, have no knowledge about what they are. Shahada, the Declaration of Faith, Salat, Islamic prayer offered five times daily facing towards Mecca, Zakat, almsgiving and charity, Sawam, fasting in the month of Ramadan, and Hajj, the pilgrimage. So with 7 million Muslims in America and 1.6 billion Muslims around the world, no matter how knowledgeable Americans are, many stereotypes have formed, like terrorist, turban, suicide bomber, and camel, due to geopolitical events and a long history of tensions. I would say that Islam is one of the great three monotheistic religions of the world. It's unfortunately the most misunderstood religion today. The president of MSA, Aya Galal, just wants to bring awareness to Muslims and Islam so others can see the beauty in it like she does. Um, just the general global community needs to be more educated on Islam. Um, Islam is a beautiful religion that you know, advocates peace, justice, loving, helping others, and a lot of people unfortunately misunderstand Islam. MSAs across the nation hope to bring more awareness and understanding about Islam and Muslims through education and events. Nicole Kessler, Q30 News. Quinnipiac held its annual United Way food truck fundraiser on Wednesday. Five food trucks from the New Haven area, including Mr. Softy, Cassius, Rough House, Taco Pacifico, and Sugar, came to Quinnipiac in support of United Way, a nonprofit organization dedicated to improving the quality of life for the New Haven community. According to its website, United Way's mission is to create long lasting change by addressing the underlying causes of the problems we face in our communities, including health, income, and education. Three entrepreneurship students made five-year-old Kendall Pallone's dreams of a come true on Friday. Born with cerebral palsy, all Pallone wanted to do on Halloween was to trick and treat and become Cinderella. Philip Senatiempo, Kevin Smolar, and Haley Swartz transformed a wheelchair into Cinderella's coach as a class project. The students spent more than 60 hours working on the project, and more than 200 additional students showed up in support. Kendall's father, an associate athletic trainer for Quinnipiac, who praised the students for their effort, saying, quote, it says a lot about each of them, end quote. Kevin is here now with us to talk about the experience. So, Kevin, what made you guys decide to do this for Kendall? So, we're in an entrepreneurship 410 class, and it's about building a business. And we were actually in a group project, group meeting, on the computer, and Haley got distracted and went on Facebook. So she stumbled upon this video of a dad making costumes for his children, and we looked at each other and said, we need to do that. So we dropped our business idea and decided to build a costume. How did you get in contact with the, um, with the Pallone family? So Haley plays field hockey, and she was in the training room getting treatment, and the Adam overheard Haley talking about it, and said, I think I have the perfect girl for you. And it was his daughter, Kenda. Mm -hmm. So how did it feel to do that for her that day? It was beyond remarkable. Just seeing the, her smile so big and seeing everyone come out and support her was beyond unreal. Now, you got in touch with 200 students. Uh, was that all through social media? Was it just networking? Yeah. How, how, did, you know, how did that happen? Um, mostly through social media and just spreading the word throughout campus. I think everyone, when everyone heard the uh, calls, everyone wanted to come out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Thank Kevin. Thank you so Thank much you for coming. having me. I appreciate wow, it. It's incredible, huh? Yeah, it's very nice. Wow. Coming up after the break, the votes have been counted. And now Hamden knows who its next mayor will be. And we have your local news from in and around Hamden. But first, let's check in with Nicole for a preview of this week's weather. How's it looking, Nicole? Today's temperatures are 58 in Waterbury, 56 in Meriden. Those are unusually high for November. Stay with us and I'll give you more.
Welcome to A Sheer Sensation, North Haven's premier cosmetology service, located at 140 Washington Avenue, minutes from Hamden. We offer an array of services from basic cuts <laughs> and Good colors, job, man. Thank you. extensions, and formaldehyde free keratin treatments. We also provide Thank hair you. chalk. And Thank you, you're the best, man. When you spend $60, your cue card will get you 10% off. Call us at 203 239 6477 to make your next appointment at a sheer sensation. My name is Doug Thoreau. For nearly 90 years, three generations of my family have been providing the highest quality repair service. Insurance companies will refer car owners to lesser quality shops to save money. At Thoreau Auto Body, we provide the highest quality repairs with a lifetime guarantee to maintain the safety and value of your car. That's the quality you deserve. Thoreau Auto Body, our best work goes unnoticed. Welcome to Joya Spa and Salon in Hamden. Whether you want a new look or the perfect wedding day hair, come to us for complete hair and nail care, cuts, styles, updos, extensions, and beautiful dimensional hair color, as well as manis and pedis, acrylics, gels, and shellac. Treat yourself to a facial, a peel, or microdermabrasion. Relax with a variety of massage techniques, including Swedish and hot stone massage. Joya Spa and Salon. Call today. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken and cheese for just over $4. Giant cheesesteak subs and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Q-Cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. Democrat Kurt Belzano Lang was elected in the Hamden mayoral election yesterday. Lang won eight out of the nine districts. Q30's Ashley Nally Nagel got to speak with Mayor Lang about his plans for the future. The things I'd like to work on in the next, uh, next, couple, uh, next couple of years, um, the two bedrocks of any good community are strong finances and public safety, and uh, continuing to do things that smart municipalities do, keep budgets balanced, um, keep working on our pension reform and start now that we're at a sustainable level overall to start working on lowering taxes. Similar to us at Q30, the Hamden Middle School has a station of their own. The 7th and 8th graders put together a daily newscast to share the school's morning announcements. Q30's Kanisha McFadden has more. Hamden Middle School students are making their voices heard loud and clear. The morning news crew has given students the opportunity to be seen. You know, the old system of doing things was probably the way when you were in school, too. You'd have the morning announcements read over a PA system, which is very two-dimensional. It's not a lot of fun. Um, so we had a video distribution system in the building, um, and we started to use that to broadcast a morning announcement, basically morning announcements. The school gets equipment and software through grants and budgets, but the process was not a quick one. Uh, we've been at the school for nine years now, and I finally got a nice camera and a video mixer and a computer that can handle uh, the video editing. Um, so that's taken me that long to build this program. The morning newscast allows students to build skills they wouldn't normally learn in the classroom. Well, I was never like the best public speaker. I always stuttered and had trouble, and my parents thought it would be a really good idea for me to come out of my shell kind of because I was always really kind of shy and it'll help me in the long run so I hope like I can do this like in high school maybe even through college because I really enjoy it. For others it's a way to meet new people. I mean I'm usually like socially awkward and don't even talk to people that I know but here at the news crew I'm connected to people through the news. We have to talk about what I'm editing or what they're going to do what they're going to say and 
it's just helping me connect with people. And for the rest, the news crew is a home away from home. Well, we have kind of, we have kind of like a closeness um, between all the news crew. Um, it's almost like a small family. I think that we've grown to be more of a family than just friends. We are here every day together. We talk about our days, like if we're having a bad day, um, we all kind of like talk about it. So we enjoy spending time with each other. When asked why they do this, they all gave the same answer. It's just a fun experience. It's really fun. Well, it's fun. Kenesha McFadden, this Q30 News. This is signing off. Enjoy your two-day jailbreak. It's Kenesha. We now turn to the latest in local news, including multiple shootings in New Haven over the Halloween weekend. So it seems a lot has been going on in the Hamden New Haven area. Dora Labatt has the latest in local news. Dora? Thanks, guys. Back in June, a man headbutted and threw a drinking glass at his ex-girlfriend's boyfriend in Eli's on Whitney. The victim suffered from a broken nose, fractured skull, and concussion. Just a few days ago, the man who put him in the hospital turned himself into the police. 25-year-old Dylan Ryan was charged with assault in the first degree, reckless endangerment in the first degree, and disorderly conduct. And some areas of New Haven were not a safe place to be over Halloween weekend. A 13-year-old boy was among many people who were shot over the weekend. The boy was shot in the calf between Butler and New Hall Street. The shooter has not been identified. In another incident, a man was walking with his friend to Shepherd Street when he heard a pop sound. The victim's friend drove him to the hospital, then disappeared before the police arrived. There is no evidence that a shooting happened in that area. In another part of New Haven, Yale students stirred up some controversy on Halloween. A Yale fraternity is under investigation after its members allegedly did not let non-white students into their Halloween party. Sigma Alpha Epsilon is being accused by some students of having a white girls only policy at their house. Students that attended the party said that they heard a fraternity brother saying white girls only and letting only blonde women enter the house. Yale's SAE president says that the fraternity's members did not discriminate on the basis of race. And the Hamden Town Commission got a recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Department for a new student permit policy that would require that landlords that live at the properties they are renting to students. Landlords are complaining that this new policy is illegal and discriminatory. However, Hamden argues that college students are not a protected group and therefore do not have the different rights from everyone else. Reports say the disagreement will be taken to court. That's all for this week's local news and back to Dan and Kelly at the desk. Thanks, Dora. Coming up on the Q30 newscast, Liv Defoe has your full entertainment report. And Nicole Kessler will bring us our complete forecast for the week. So, what's it going to be like, Nicole? So, guys, today is November 4th, and it was practically 70 degrees. Yeah, this, this weather cannot make up its mind. It's November. Can it be fall yet? I know. I feel that I should be wearing a winter coat at this point, but I guess not. I guess the shorts and light sweaters will do. I'll have more for you coming up next. We are your source for entertainment news. Laser Medica Derma Centers is a new philosophy in skincare for all ages. We are dedicated to offering the most technologically advanced and least invasive skincare treatments. Show your cue card and receive 20% off any procedure. We also provide microdermabrasion and Botox treatments, all performed in a relaxing spa environment. We are conveniently located at 52 Washington Avenue in North Haven, just down the street from Quinnipiac's North Haven campus. Call to schedule a free consultation and find out how Laser Medica can give you smooth, sexy skin all year long.
back to the Q30 newscast. And if we take a look at our current temperatures, we could see that in Boston it's 55 and, the, and in New York it's 61. And if we take a look at the whole map in general, we could see that it is extremely unusually high temperatures for it being November 4th. With the tomorrow's temperatures, um, today's temperatures, it is 58 in Waterbury, 56 in Meriden, and 58 in New Haven, which is also extremely warm for November. The regional radar, it is clear as can be, no rain, no unusual weather. I guess that is why we've been having amazing weather here in Connecticut. Tonight's forecast is 47 clear, winds at south at three miles per hour. So when you're leaving the library, no fear, you're not gonna be too chilly. You probably won't even need a sweater because it is going to be relatively warm for November yet again. For um, tomorrow's temperatures, 68 in Waterbury, 71 in Meriden, 66 in New Haven, high 60s, um, low 70s, and I'm from Florida, and it is 85 to 90 degrees there all year round. So for me, being from Florida, Connecticut, it is super warm. It is like we are in Florida. This is shorts weather during the day. This is light sweater weather. So this is what we all love, no snow. And tomorrow's temperatures, uh, tomorrow's forecast is 67 degrees, partly cloudy, wind south to southwest at seven miles per hour. So even with the sun that's gonna seep through a little bit, it is going to feel like 70 degrees. Seven day forecast, 67 on Thursday, Friday 69, Saturday 60, Sunday 52. It's gonna start to drop, which is going to bring then on Tuesday rain which I guess is going to start to look like November usual weather. So sad, the 70s may be gone, but 50s is still pretty awesome. That is it for this week's Q30 weather forecast. I'm Nicole Kessler, and now back to the desk. Thank you so much, Nicole. Hello, it's Adele. <laughs> the British pop star is making a comeback and is breaking some records while she's doing it. And the legendary franchise is set to return in 2017. We now go to Liv Dufault for your latest in entertainment news. Liv? Adele is back. The British pop star's new single, Hello, has become the first to get more than 1 million U.S. downloads in one week. And according to Billboard, the single scored 1.1 million downloads in its first week alone, as well as debuting at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Not only is the song a hit, but the music video is breaking records as well. Hello set a record on Vivo for most views in a single day. Adele's new album, titled 25, will hit stores November 20th. In other Hollywood news, the Peanuts' favorite cartoon dog, Snoopy, gets a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame just in time for the new Peanuts movie. Charlie Brown's beloved pet is the first animated beagle to get this honor. The dog star is located next to creator of the Peanuts cartoon, Charles M. Schultz. Snoopy and the gang will be back in action on the big screen this weekend. The Peanuts movie premieres this Friday, November 6th. The beloved Star Trek franchise is returning just in time for its 50th anniversary. CBS announced it will launch a new television series in January 2017, while Star Trek will celebrate its 50th anniversary in 2016 as one of the most successful enterta entertainment franchises of all time. The new series will blast off with a special preview broadcast on the CBS television network. All first-run episodes after that will be available exclusively in the U.S. on CBS All Access, the network's streaming service. The series will introduce new characters, new worlds, and new civilizations while keeping the traditional theme Themes of the signature franchise. Another franchise is becoming a theme park. Lionsgate is bringing the Hunger Games franchise to life. The studio's chief brand officer, Tim Palin, told the New York Times roller coasters and other rides based on the movies will anchor a new theme park near Atlanta. This theme park, which will be called Avatron, hopes to open by 2019. And that is not all. Lionsgate also hopes the Hunger Games franchise will anchor an indoor experience center near China. This is set to open in late 2018. Plus, author J.K. Rowling is keeping busy even after the Harry Potter series has ended. Rowling tells BBC she has written part of a children's book, but she didn't elaborate on what the book will be about. The author is also currently promoting her most recent adult novel, Career of Evil, and to keep the Harry Potter spirit alive for fans of the franchise, Rowling is working on a stage show called Harry Potter and the Cursed Child that's set to premiere in London in summer 2016. As if she isn't busy enough, a movie based on her book, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, will be released next year in theaters. Thanks, guys. That's all the entertainment I have for you this week. Now back to the desk. 
Thanks, Liv. Coming up next on the Q30 Newscast, we'll take a look at the latest in the world of Bobcat sports. Stay with us. Welcome to A Sheer Sensation, North Haven's premier cosmetology service, located at 140 Washington Avenue, minutes from Hamden. We offer an array of services, from basic cuts and colors to lash extensions and formaldehyde free keratin treatments. We also provide hair chalk and styling for men. When you spend $60, your cue card will get you 10% off. Call us at 203-239-6477 to make your next appointment at a sheer sensation. My name is Doug Thoreau. For nearly 90 years, three generations of my family have been providing the highest quality repair service. Insurance companies will refer car owners to lesser quality shops to save money. At Thoreau Auto Body, we provide the highest quality repairs with a lifetime guarantee to maintain the safety and value of your car. That's the quality you deserve. Thoreau Auto Body, our best work goes unnoticed. Welcome to Joya Spa and Salon in Hamden. Whether you want a new look or the perfect wedding day hair, come to us for complete hair and nail care, cuts, styles, updos, extensions, and beautiful dimensional hair color, as well as manis and pedis, acrylics, gels, and shellac. Treat yourself to a facial, a peel, or microdermabrasion. Relax with a variety of massage techniques, including Swedish and hot stone massage. Joya Spa and Salon. Call today. History was made last Saturday for the women's cross-country team. And rankings are in for men's ice hockey. q 30 Sam Prevo has your update on Bobcat Sports. Thanks, guys. The USCHO men's ice hockey polls were released on Monday, and Quinnipiac is now ranked fifth in the nation after sweeping their two-game series against the former number nine team, State. The Bobcats had a goal differential of 9-2 to two in the series against St. Cloud. Quinnipiac will be on the road this weekend to take on Colgate and Cornell on November 6th and 7th, respectively. And the women's cross-country team became MAC champions on Saturday for the first time in team history, taking the crown away from powerhouse Iona. Neve Ash, Tracy Campbell, and Emily Wolf all finished in the top five for the Bobcats, and coach Carolyn Martin won MAC cross-country coach of the year honors. The Bobcats will now move on to the NCAA Northeast Regional on November 13th, hosted by Boston College. The men's soccer team ended their season with a 2-0 loss at Ryder on Saturday, ending conference play with a 1-5 and 4 record. The Bobcats will now move on to the MAC Championship Tournament at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex in Florida from November 5th through 9th. Quinnipiac will be the number 10 seed in the tournament and take on the number 7 seed Canisius in the first round on November 5th. The winner will take on the number 2 seed Ryder in the quarterfinals on November 6th. For all updates on Quinnipiac Sports, follow Q30 Sports on Twitter. That's all for your sports update. Now back to the desk. Thanks, Sam. When we come back, a preview of this week's Quinnipiac People on a professor breaking borders to help educate her students. Stay with us. We are your source for entertainment news. Laser Medica Derma Centers is a new philosophy in skin care for all ages. We are dedicated to offering the most technologically advanced and least invasive skin care treatments. Show your cue card and receive 20% off any procedure. We also provide microdermabrasion and Botox treatments, all performed in a relaxing spa environment. We are conveniently located at 52 Washington Avenue in North Haven, just down the street from Quinnipiac's North Haven campus. Call to schedule a free consultation and find out how Laser Medica can give you smooth, sexy skin all year long.
It's almost time to register for classes next semester, which means students are looking for interesting classes QU will offer in the spring. This week's Quinn of People is about a professor that will be teaching a new course next semester. Have you seen these flyers around campus? For the first time ever, Quinnipiac is offering a global journalism course. Margarita Diaz is the professor that will be teaching the course spring semester 2016. The course is called JRN 300, Telling Global Stories. For this course, Diaz will take a group of students to Nicaragua during spring break to tell global stories. Diaz tells us how she became the professor to teach this class. Well, it's not that the university selected me exactly um, when, when the opportunity uh, was made available a few years ago for a group of, of uh, professors to go to Nicaragua and explore possibilities, I said that I wanted to go. And on the basis of that, we were told, you know, see if you can develop a course that uh, gives our students the opportunity to have an international experience. So that's, you know, that was for me, that was uh, early 2011. So it's been four years before I've been able to actually get a group of people together to go. It, it was because for me it was important that our students have that international experience. I wanted them to have that. I, and if it was up to me to make it possible, then yes, I will go through anything that is required to make it possible for them. I think it's an important part of what we should be doing here. The flyers for the course says, wanted bold storyteller in big letters. I asked one of the students that will be taking this course next semester what she thinks it means to tell a global story. Uh, going to a new place and bringing that back to where you're from to tell the people that are around that you're always around like what's going on somewhere else. For the full interview, head to q30television.com. And that's it for tonight on the Q30 newscast. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Q30 News. I'm Kelly Novak and I'm Daniel Keith. Have a good night.